Good morning, my cosmic kangaroo of creativity. You know, there's... When things aren't going well, you can keep doing the same thing, the same inputs, and you can't really expect a different output. That's, that's what I should be telling myself. All right, so I've been doing... I want to share a thought. This is... In this case, it is for content creation, but it's also applicable for any, almost any industry. Let's go nice cancellation. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Same inputs equals same outputs. So my style of TikTok storytelling generates so many views and very good engagement, not a humble brag. However, I just can't find brand partnerships. Just can't do it. And I don't know if it's because, I think it's mostly <clears throat> because these brands and agencies don't understand how, that their, how their product or service fits in, you know, based on their campaign goals and whatnot. And this whole time I've been thinking, okay, I need a manager, someone who can do the pitching for me, understands what I'm creating on my side, and how to make, how to share that as a valuable asset to these brands and agencies. But I've realized that none of these managers care about my content the way I care about my content and see the vision the way I see the vision, which is fair, right? Because I'm, I'm obviously a lot closer to it and it's on me to be able to communicate it. But I've been through three managers at the moment. The, what, well, the, the, the third of those is kind of like on the fence, but I'm pretty sure it's done. Uh, I can go into, I can go into those relationships another time, but essentially I'm, I've been the one to break up. <laughs> but here's my thinking. I've always been looking at me reaching out to these brands and agencies, trying to pitch an idea as, I have this thing, let me take some of your money. And like I've been trying to word it in the form of, uh, here's this campaign, or sorry, here's this concept I have, let's make it fit one of your upcoming campaigns. And the whole time I've been thinking that I'm the one providing value by coming in and being direct and saving them time and offering up a solution. But actually, I'm sure from their end, that just looks at like someone who's coming in for a money grab. And it's crazy that I haven't seen that now. But I won't say his name, but a guy I've been speaking with who's been on that, more on that agency side, the brand agency side, has helped me realize that I should be a resource. Or we as creators should be resources for these brands and agencies. So forget trying to pick up a deal from these brands and agencies and think about it. This is me stating what, how I'm thinking about it. Not that this works because I just don't know that yet, but I'm, we're about to try and figure this out. So you, you be a resource of, I have my experience on the creator side of things. Let me be a resource to share what I see on my side, to answer your questions and to better understand how things are on your side with the underlying goal of when they have a campaign, ideally they would come to me because they know how I think about this. They understand they've developed that relationship and it's then easy for them to say, we've got this deal. Here's what we're looking at. What are your thoughts? Now, that underlying goal is always going to be there. But at a top level, it has to be, how can I provide value for them? And I always thought I was providing value for them in the form of, I can help you run this campaign. Not, I can help you understand things from the creator side more. Because like, the two of us live in different worlds. So, I am gonna. I, I, I need to dedicate some time to help 
figure out how I can provide value to these brands and agencies. And hopefully develop these partnerships because I think I feel that it's my responsibility. I've been trying to find a manager who would take on the responsibility, but it's my responsibility to educate these brands on how something like my content would be very useful to their campaign as top of funnel stuff. I, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of work and I'm foreseeing, um, just like conversations and back and forth email that I, I will dedicate time to, but I'm also very interested in it too. And I think it'll be cool to share on here what I learned from their side. And as I talk about it, as I think about it, I share more too. Sorry for the sniffing. So I'm feeling pretty positively apprehensive. I don't even know if that works. But I'm excited to, <laughs> excited to see this brand agency create a relationship in a completely different light and see how it goes. And then I'm going to go home right now. And we're going to film a couple of these how many in 60 seconds videos. And if I can get to filming the or to editing the uh, switching soda with water, sorry, switching water with soda video. I think that has the potential to do quite well. Also, how ignorant is it to believe that, you know how I've been trying to be more authentic or make my videos more raw? How ignorant it is to think, to expect that people should still be interested in my content when it's less about entertainment and more about me. That's, that's nuts, isn't it? I had that realization last night. I just, to think that I'm that important, that people should care about what I have to say. Why am I focused on that? Why am I not focused on making the most entertaining video possible? I think it, that I think that all stemmed from I, for, I didn't have this real like this knowledge that TikTok as a whole is top of funnel, and the real goal there is to generate as many views as possible while also trying to share a bit about me. So, like Dustin mentioned in a comment the other day, uh, that. Uh, my videos are like a hybrid of sharing a bit about me and um, oh gosh, I'm really losing my thought. Sharing a bit about me and being there for entertaining purposes for that virality. Wow. So I think what I need to do is I'll work out a pitch email, which is essentially a pitch to these agencies and brands of Hi, this is what I do. I'd love to be a resource for you. It can't, I don't think it can Kai. I want to be honest in sharing what the underlying goal is of being like straight up honest, but I want it to be the focus to be, uh, how can I be a resource for you? So as I think through that, I'll kind of share my thoughts going through it, but Let's get home and start filming some of these videos. Cool. Toodles. Well, 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 it's late in the day. I have, I have not really had a minute to spare all day. That's not true. I prioritize some other things over... Well, I, I haven't been in a place to film, I should say. But uh, I realized, realized, that I quite often, I use the term realizations, like I've had these realizations, which probably 
text the missus that I'm on my way. Sorry. On my way. I should really make a shortcut for that. Um, I speak in realizations. It doesn't necessarily mean that I, what I've realized is then the right thing to be doing. But the way I see it is if we look at everything on a, a range from zero to 100, zero being brand new beginner, 100 being you know absolutely everything about a topic. Every time you practice, every time you fail, every time you win, you have these realizations that pitch you up a notch. It, you could, it could be one point at a time, could be five points at a time, could be 20. But every time, in my case, I have one of these realizations, I learn more about a topic, I understand something more, and I'm able to put that back into my loop of how I do something and make it better. I just wanted to clear that up, but it brought me onto this point of charisma because I could very easily say, uh, I had a realization about this thing and it's going to change all this about me and this is it. Because someone who has charisma typically talks from a place of, of passion and knowing, I would say, and fully focused on that. I'm fully focused on the thing that I'm working on, but I don't, it just, it's, it, I feel like it would just be wrong to speak in a way that says what I'm saying is the truth. Like there are lots of things that I, I know to, <laughs> there are lots of things I know to be the truth and I will talk about them in such a way, but for the rest of it, I take no shame and I, I feel like all of us should take no shame in uh, latch, not latching on, but taking on the idea that actually it's okay that you aren't an expert at something. Anyway, one of the things I did focus on today was my thought process around how do I develop relationships with these brands and agencies. Again, underlying goal, sponsorships, brand partnerships. And I really do think that the way I'm going about it now, as if like trying to be a resource for them to help answer questions, and I'm thinking about this in the form of you know, maybe once a week, once a month, I send them an article that I think is really useful or insightful. We do like a, I don't know, a lunch call or, by the way, I didn't come up with this idea. It was a podcast from a guy called The Creator Wizard. I, actually, I don't know if I know his real name, actually. We did a podcast with Jay Klaus. And at Creator Wizard, I've been following his stuff for a long time. And essentially, he gives a breakdown on how to get yourself sponsored. Now, you would say that as a creator, you don't really want to be doing all the brand partnerships and managing on your own because it's just so much work and you should just focus on making the content yourself. And if I was in a niche, like if I was tight in a niche, things would be different. I probably would go, I probably would be able to find a manager that could bring in more deals for me that would be able to pitch me better. But at this point, because of my style of content, it just seems so difficult. And it feels like I need to be the one doing the work. But I think I can do that because I like talking about this stuff. It, I've always seen this as like a, a burden of, oh, I've got to manage these relationships and partnerships. But actually, I would get to have conversations about the things, the thing that I enjoy talking about. And this is a long game, by the way. This isn't a get a sponsorship in the next week or two. This is a probably, I'm thinking minimum three months. 
of having these conversations before anything comes back. But I imagine that what would come back would be a lot. Yeah, you would be amazed. So let's say typically a brand employs this like top level agency to do all their marketing for them. And then that agency will either find the creator or find the creator's manager. So you've then got two levels in there where people are taking a cut. And that cut on each of those levels is gonna be anywhere between 20 and 40%. So like, let's say my rate for a video is 10K and I have a manager who does all the work. They're taking, tw they're, they could either add on their 20% on top. So like, let's say, I literally can't bother with the math. So let's just say that's 12 grand. So now if I had a manager, my manager would be saying to the next agency that are employed by the company, the brand, all right, the rate is 12K. And then that agency are like, okay, well, we'll then tack on our 20 to 40%, whatever that is, I don't know, take that up to 15, 16 grand. It's going to be more than that, isn't it? 15, 16 grand. And that's what the brand are paying for that partnership. So where, in my case, I, I'm doing the majority of the work, I only end up actually seeing two thirds of the full amount that was paid. So if you develop that relationship directly with the brand, you get to skip out all those levels. Yes, you have more work on your end, but I'm pretty sure the work involved is not going to amount to 6K in that case, in that example. Now, honestly, I think the crazy to say I know, but the numbers should be higher than that. Once I get back to a place of getting decent views. <laughs> All right, boys, I'm toasted. I'm, I'm amazed. Things are going so well at the hospital with our, my son. I can't say I wish life was different at the moment. But I am also looking forward to my life going back to what it was where I have the time to be able to do these things. And I'm looking forward to sinking my teeth in. But the two videos that we tried so far, I've tried two videos of the, the new series I wanted to do. Both of them have flopped. Uh, I think I understand why. I think it's because there's no, uh, what's the, no, no real catch. Like if I give an example of the dude who how many bags of flour can hold me or how many bags of glitter can hold me. The viewer knows that if the stuff doesn't hold him, he's going to fall and hit the ground. Whereas with my stuff, I don't know, like there's no real catch that the viewer, there's no obvious catch that the viewer can see. And I, th I wonder if that's part of my problem, but I don't know. Let's do a few more videos, see how they do and go from there. All right, namaste, namaste. I don't know what that means. <laughs>